one of these days, John Apatow will find the secret for managing to make one of his comedies at a respectable length, rather than nearing two and a half hours. <laughs> What are those numbers on your arm? Oh, that's uh, the date my dad died. He was a fireman. Died in a fire 17 years ago. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. Don't be, it's fine. Knock, knock. Who's there? Not your dad. <laughs> How's it going, guys? Welcome back to a brand new episode of Luke's Reviews. And on today's video, I will be reviewing the newest Judd Apatow movie, starring Pete Davidson, who also co wrote the screenplay for this, as well as also starring Marissa Tomei and Bill Burr, The King of Staten Island. Acting is an almost semi-autobiographical look at Pete Davidson's life. He plays Scott, a man in his mid-twenties who, rather than trying to start getting his life together, prefers to lounge about, smoke weed, and fantasize about launching a tattoo parlor slash restaurant. His attitude isn't helped by the fact that Scott's firefighter father passed away when he was young, and when his mother begins dating another fireman, this sends Scott off into a fit of self-destruction. Similar to last year's Honey Boy, which I strongly urge you to check out, whereas that was um, a self-autobiographical look at Shia LaBeouf in his early years of acting, his dysfunctional relationship with his father, and then the effect that had on him later in life. This is very much what I would imagine to be quite a cathartic experience for Pete Davidson. As mentioned in my plot synopsis, the character of Scott lost his father when he attended a hotel fire. Now in real life, Pete Davidson lost his father because he was one of the first responders in 9-11. He's been quite open about that and been quite open about a lot of the personal demons that he suffered with and the toll that that has taken on his mental health. So for him to translate all of that onto screen where he plays a character dealing with those same things and he wrote the screenplay for it, that's quite an impressive and profound accomplishment. Thankfully, he emerges from it looking like a bona fide star. He is really, really quite impressive in this role. I was already familiar with his style of humor, the, the deadpan, pessimistic, self-deprecating style that he has. I've seen it when he's been on Saturday Night Live, and I've seen a couple of his stand-up specials as well. Uh, I, 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 that's kind of my style of humor, so seeing him bring that to... Uh, the, the, well, kind of the big screen, it's not actually in cinemas, it's available for uh, on-demand platforms, but seeing him bring it to a movie-like format where he clearly isn't shackled to the constraints of network television um, gives you a better idea of who he is, both as a performer and a person. As I said, his style of humour really clicked for me, but he really does impress when it comes to the dramatic scenes. The other big star of this film is Bill Burr, who I believe can make anything he stars in significantly better. What I like about Burr is that I feel like he can slag you off and call you a dickhead to your face, and yet in the very next moment he will be spouting these words of wisdom and you will just pine to hear. He does an amazing job in this film, and I think the dynamic between him and Davidson's character, that's really the strongest element about this movie. Marissa Tomei does a good job too, as does Belle Pally as Scott's on and off girlfriend. She makes a really good impression. Even Steve Buscemi pops up as a fellow firefighter, which I thought was a nice touch considering that before he became an actor, he did work in the fire service. But, and I alluded to this in my intro, my biggest complaint with this film is that it is too darn long. Comedy is one of the trickiest genres to nail, but yet again, Judd Apatow has made a movie that is almost two hours and 20 minutes long it did not need to be anywhere near that length. A lot of this film could have been trimmed down. There's an entire subplot about Scott and his friends and a, a planned robbery that feels entirely unnecessary. You literally could have just cut it out of the film and I don't think you would have lost anything but time. Sometimes the plot feels like it's revolving around in circles and as for the actual content, like a lot of John Apatow films recently, there's a good blend between comedy and drama, and for this, I'd say it's pretty much a 50-50 split. But that being said, I feel like this film could have really doubled down on both the comedy and the drama. There are a lot of humorous moments in the film, but nothing that I would consider laugh-out-loud funny. There are a lot of emotional moments in this film, but nothing that I would particularly consider moving. It seems to just skate 
along the surface rather than wanting to go any deeper. If you're a fan of previous Apatow movies, this isn't going to be anything you haven't seen before, but as far as films go, it's, it's by no means bad. Yes, its runtime is needlessly long, but if you manage to connect to the character of Scott, then you'll probably enjoy it. It isn't anything special, but it is worth a watch if you get a chance. Overall, I'm going to give The King of Staten Island a 6 out of 10. So anyway guys, those are my thoughts on The King of Staten Island. Let me know what you thought of the film down in the comments below, as well as my question to you. Seeing as Pete Davidson came from Saturday Night Live, and he's considered to be one of the more popular members of the recent roster, I want to know, of all time, who is your favourite SNL member? Thanks for watching. If you have enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more, please make sure that you click that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. All the links to my social media accounts, my Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and my letterbox are all in the description below. And if you haven't liked the video, what are you, what are you still doing here?